Well, today I want to answer someone's question. And I have these five things a happy couple should do. And I will start with, if you want your marriage to work out well, the first thing, you should put God first. Put God first in your relationship. Put God first in everything that you do in your family. Put God first in every decision. Put God first in every move and you will enjoy the happy marriage. You can find it in the book of Matthew 6, 33 and also in Proverbs 6, no, uh, Proverbs 3, 6. You can find it there. Second one is learn to communicate. I've come to discover that many of the couples, they don't communicate. And that weakens, weakens the relationship. And it might end up also killing the relationship. We should know how to communicate to each other. We should be open on, in, in, in the matter of communication. We should be able to put issues in the table and dis, discuss, communicate about it. By doing so, you are, you are saving your marriage. Don't be so selfish. Don't be full of yourself. And also don't be so pride of your, of your marriage. Remember, communication is the key into our marriages. That one is pray together. The family that prays together stays together. We can find that many of the, of the, of the, of the prayers that are not answers is due to that the families or the members of the families or the couples they are not they are not in good time they don't pray to they don't pray they, they don't pray together but the bible tells us as for me and my house we shall praise you god and for me and my house we shall pray to the lord as for me and my house we shall commit ourselves to the lord as for me and my house we shall worship you the lord by doing so, by practicing so, by declaring so, you find that our prayers are being answered. And you can find it in the book of Matthew 18.20, Ephesians uh, 3, verse 12 to 14, and also Matthew 18.19. Uh, 18, and all, in addition, you can find it also in 1 Peter 3.7. Number four, set health boundaries. Many of the, of the families... They lack boundaries. They love to discuss the bedrooms issues. They are outside. They, they, they love to discuss uh, their, their issues. They are outside with the world. The world is there to laugh at you whenever you discuss those issues with them. Remember, if you can't communicate with your family, if you can't communicate with your husband or, you, or, or your wife, you are, you, are setting, you, you are setting a bad example. Set these boundaries in our families. Draw a line. There are things that the world should not know about your families, the bedroom matters and all kind of the stuff that, um, that you might think of. You should draw boundaries. And that by drawing the boundaries, you make your, uh, your relationship to be healthy and strong and confident. Five, listen to each other. While somebody is talking, let one party come down. De listen to one another, whatever they are, they are saying. Listen to what they are bringing in, the, in their table. Listen, listen to them. They, in, you can find it also, also that one in the, in the books of Proverbs 12, 14. James 1, 19, and also Proverbs 17, 27. I actually, James 1, 19, it talks, about, it talks about be quick to listen and slow to speak. That's a good uh, advice from the Bible. So lastly, is respect each other. Respect each other. If you can't respect your wife, if you can't respect your husband, who else do you expect them to to? To respect if you can't respect them if you can't talk good of them if you can't advise them if you can't talk good of them then something is wrong about there you have to change it you have you have to begin to respect each other you have to to begin 
to show respect to each other and you will create a good example the children also will respect you if you can't respect your wife if you can't respect your husband then don't expect your children to respect you as well don't don't expect the neighbors to respect you don't expect also the other or other family members to respect you you have to respect your wife you have to respect to respect your your husband so that others will respect you as well remember this all the time i've tried to answer someone's question how two couples and happy couples should do stay blessed as you practice what i have already shared with you i love you all and god loves you so much stay blessed <laughs> God loves you so much. God loves you and his love is above all the heavens. He's above all the heavens. And his original plan is for the couples to enjoy the marriage. Because it was his plan for two people to be together. That's why he joined them and they become one flesh. And he loves you so much. But there's something I want to con to to insist on praying together as a family. There is a power in praying together as a, as, as a family, as a couples. You break so many things by praying, by praying together. By praying, by praying together, you become, you, you, you become more than a conquerors. Let me read from the book of Matthew 18, 19 to 20 and see what it says. Again, truly I tell you, that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three gathered in my name, there am I with them. If you see in the Bible, beginning with, again, truly I tell you, truly I tell you, truly, this truly test the power, truly I tell you, is an honest, is an honest promise from the Lord. It's an honest, it is, it, it, it is an honest key to open, to unlock what, have been, what has been closed in your life. He said that if you agree, if you agree, if you become in agreement together with your husband, there's nothing that can be hindered before you. There's nothing that you cannot do as long as you agree and you ask whatever you have agreed through the name of Jesus Christ and you shall receive it. You shall receive it. You shall receive it. In verse 20 say that, for where two or three are gathered, where two or three are gathered, a husband and a wife, and they have children, when they gather to pray together, to worship the Lord, to magnify the name of the Lord, He is a faithful Lord. He is a wholesome God. He will listen to you and will, He will come for your rescue because He has a good plans for, hope, for you, a hope and a good future. That's why He joined you to be one flesh and the children are the gifts that He gives to each and every couples. My prayer is that you listen to all this video and you will be a happy, happy couples. Happy couples. And that's what the Lord Jesus Christ needs from all of us. From all of us. Stay together. Pray together, worship, to, wo worship together, read the word of the Lord together. Actually, in addition, this is heaven's constitution. As, as you know, every country has got its own constitution. If you go to America, if you go to Kenya, if you go to Philippines, if you go to Colombia, or if you go to England, they have their own constitution. This is the constitution from our King Jesus Christ and if you follow it if you follow it if you follow it you never lack anything you never lack anything 
the world constitution the world constitution can be broken and can be changed but this constitution cannot be changed cannot and it will never be changed it has been sealed it has been sealed and nobody nobody can change it nobody can change it nobody can change it and unless unless himself who wrote this constitution and he cannot change it because he is a faithful he is a faithful and awesome god the world constitution can lie to you you can change it look at the, what is happening right now the gays and the lesbians they are fighting for their rights but in our heavenly constitution it is abomination before god because it's, it was not the plan for God to have a man and a man and a woman and a woman in marriage. Who suffers most? most the adopted children. And I'm not sorry to say about it. I'm not sorry, I'm not sorry to say about it. I'm not so, and I will never be sorry about it. It has been sealed. It is abomination between marriage, a man and a woman, and a wo and a, and a, I'm not a man and a man and a woman and a woman. It is abomination. But it's pleasing before God when a man and a woman marries. It is His plan. Stay blessed. God bless you all. Thank you so much. <laughs>